Hey guys, it's Lil Bella here with another video, and today we're going to be going over runes, because I feel like runes are definitely a misunderstood thing, so I'm going to be showing you guys off, uh, you know, the most popular runes that I run nowadays, kind of explain my thought process to it, and help you understand runes just a little bit more than most people end up kind of breaking down in terms of runes. I see sometimes, and a lot of times when I talk to people, they kind of just go with uh, a website suggestion, stuff like that, and here I'm going to be kind of teaching you uh, some of the really underappreciated rune setups and rune combinations that I use all the time to farm LP. <laughs> So let's just jump right into it, right? <laughs> Which is gonna be uh, a couple of different ones that are really, really important for you to kind of understand and uh, and we'll just be jumping into it. So first off, as you can kind of see on your screens, here is uh, my resolve tree for Guardian. Now, a lot of times what ends up happening is people always ask me like, yo, you know, why don't you go airy on a lot of enchanters that you play? Um, so here I'm gonna kind of break down my rune setups, my decision making around it, and kind of what are some of the false interpretations of runes. So I know a lot of people will probably see rune setups like this, uh, that maybe go something like that, or maybe there's an adjustable on one of the runes and they go something like biscuits. Uh, totally reasonable, I understand the thought process behind it, but this page is gonna be mostly for uh, enchanters. So champions like uh, Lulu, Soraka, Janna, etc. <laughs> Renata, these kinds of characters. So the reason why I run a page like this pretty frequently is because of stat efficiency and consistency. So number one obviously is, is that we're not going to be taking uh, biscuits. The reason why I don't like biscuits nowadays is biscuits for the most part uh, don't really heal you that much in laning phase and usually don't make a huge difference uh, especially unless you are trading kind of at level one and losing a ton of HP. So I'm not a fan of biscuits unless you're really, really aggressively uh, trading because the amount of healing that it receives is really not that great. And then the opportunity cost is really problematic for me. So when you take things like biscuits, if you don't use them, they're a dead rune, right? Like they gain no value pretty much at all. Like sure, they give you 120 mana, but for the most part, not a fan of it. So that's why I've been predominantly running a page like this. The reason for this is mostly just because of, I don't think Aerie is a very good rune. Now let me explain why I don't think Aerie is a good rune. Number one is, is that most of the characters that I listed, like Soraka, Lulu, Janna, etc., cetera, uh, these are characters that don't poke that well. Sure, you might hit some poke or you might be trading a little bit, but unless you're in an insanely advantageous laning phase, like Lulu versus Vayne or something, uh, most of the power is going to be on the shield. Now, the reason why I don't like this is because a lot of times, airy shield in the laney phase is very small and usually doesn't make a huge difference. So what I mean by that is like if you Lulu shield somebody for 150, uh, the extra 30 or so shielding that ends up happening, a lot of times doesn't even matter. And one of the biggest problems that I have with airy in general, it doesn't shield you which is why I love Guardian so much more. It procs off of poke, so you don't really have to, you know, play too around it, and it shields you. And I feel like when you play Enchanters, the biggest way you lose is by being all in as the support. Also, the way you should think about it is like this. Bonus healing and shielding doesn't matter that much when only one shield happens. So like if you heal someone for 200, 5% extra healing, not that big of a deal. But now if you heal them three times, then it's really valuable which means that protecting people from front-loaded damage is the premium. You know, when your AD carry gets hooked, you want to be able to like shield Lulu ulti and then have them start kiting out. And now, now that all their damage is out, your teammates maybe, you know, 20, 30%. And now they can go aggressively because you can, you've bought the time that you need to start CCing them and kite backwards. Guardian fulfills this potential really, really well. And it's why I think Guardian is just generally better on top of the fact that the characters that I also listed have problems with being poked pretty frequently. Um, also, I'm just a bigger fan of the sorcery tree or uh, the guardian tree itself. So what I mean by that is that although you can go into things like gathering storm in the sorcery tree, uh, I really, really like the resolve tree because of having access to this top rune, which can be used for, you know, things like shield bash if you need it for shielding yourself frequently or font of life or demolish. Um, and in general, I'm just a bigger fan of how guardian operates because usually if you have smaller trades that are uh, frequent in your laning phase, usually one guardian shield or one airy. That's kind of how it works. Maybe you get one airy shield and one damage shield or damage airy, 
uh, but the, dis the discrepancy between the two of them is really, really not that big. Aerie obviously does much better than Guardian as you level up, right? And start adding those points, but Guardian, premium rune. Love running this rune on pretty much all enchanters because of that, and because of these two runes right here. Now, I want to tackle this uh, differential really, really quickly, because I think it's something that a lot of people don't realize. Why do I take conditioning every game? A lot of people ask me. Well, the reason why is bone plating is a literal scam. The reason why I say this is, is bone plating, you need to take damage, then there's three charges, then every subsequent spell breaks a charge, and it's a 1.5 second interval. So a lot of times, your three charges will almost never be absorbed, and also you can kind of see me covering over it, but... Uh, in dual lanes, it's kind of bad because after you take damage from the champion, the next three spells or attacks you receive from them deal it. Which means that things like Alistar comboing you in and Sivir hitting you four times, the Sivir damage will not go into uh, to the bone plating. I've watched enough professional play and like just laning in general to tell you that most of the time in laning phase for the first 12 minutes, bone plating absorbs 150 to 250 damage. I just don't think this is worth it because conditioning is really, really potent on enchanters because remember what we already said, right? The problem is, is that you're very squishy. You're very squishy and very easy to kill. And so uh, getting, you know, 10 extra armor and MR when you have 30 or 40 is huge. That's, you know, that's a quarter, 33% increase in tankiness. And this is why a lot of times when people watch my stream, they're like, wow, you can absorb a lot of damage as a support and it's like yes because i take the runes for it uh this will be even better by the way uh when we move forward into the durability update and i would still run these runes because of it after that it's overgrowth and the reason why i think overgrowth is pretty much always better than revitalize outside of playing soraka is kind of the example i like to correlate to is because usually players kits are about front loaded damage and making sure they don't die instantly um so because of that a champion like lulu for example or Janna, you know you get that shield off the five percent shielding and healing a lot of times doesn't matter um whereas a champion like soraka gets the full 15 percent because you want people to under 50 percent then you loot you soraka ult them you're healing them you know subsequently multiple times whereas a lot of times you know things like lulu shield Janna shield sometimes you just use it for damage buffers so I'm a big fan of taking overgrowth with this just because of compounding power. Uh, in the same way that the conditioning makes you get way more armor and MR, uh, think of you know playing a Lulu, you, get, you have a 1200, 1300, 1400 health, and all of a sudden now you have a rune that's giving you 150 extra HP, that's a huge bump, uh, especially because you're also getting that conditioning value. So this is my premium go-to uh enchanter setup i love running this setup pretty much all the time i think it's really really great uh it allows you to do tons of shielding and healing still but be way harder to kill and it's more consistent too than taking things like biscuits i only really recommend taking biscuits in really tough matchups where you lose a ton of health but i would honestly uh i would honestly argue that most people that i watch take biscuits a lot of times they sit in their inventory or they don't really heal that much mana and health that actually matter and that's the really important thing is that matter. There are break points that actually change the matchups. Um, so next, what I'm going to be showing you guys is going to be my new tank build. Uh, if you've watched any of my videos beforehand, I've talked about it a lot. And I feel like this is a way better uh, you know, lease on life when it comes to playing tanks. I know a lot of people have been watching pro play, watching Nautilus's hook in with Glacial and then basically die to a fart. Uh, not a fan of it. I like my tanky champions to be tanky i know crazy right um so i don't recommend taking glacial i think it's a super overrated rune most of the time while the player is cc'd uh their glacial is running out a lot of the times especially if you have subsequent cc's so like if you play nautilus and you anchor and then ulti the anchor is the proccing form of glacial but then you've knocked them up with the ulti so and then a lot of times people are running away plus the damage isn't towards you it's only towards your teammates so i hate glacial i pretty much think that it's a cheese rune you take it for a character to all in at level one or level two maybe you're playing leona into a crap matchup and you're like well i want glacial so that I can Zenith Blade on this Karma and then slow her because I don't have my stun and then try to all in her. 
Um, I think in general, I'm not a fan of it. So this is the rune page that I've been running predominantly on tanks. Uh, sometimes I take shield bash if I'm playing things like Nautilus. Otherwise, I take font of life. And basically what ends up happening is, is that if you actually build, you know, real tank items, you'll find that your character is actually incredibly durable. Uh, I usually go Iceborne Gauntlet or the uh, New Righteous Glory item. And then I am going Frozen Heart second. And with this combination of runes, because you take uh, Legend's Tenacity, you can always run Steel Plated Toe Boots or Ninja Tabbies, which means that your character's durability skyrockets. I'm not a fan of Locket right now for the most part. I feel like that item is just not that great for making you tanky as a support. Yes, it will make your carries tankier, and I still recommend building Locket on characters like Braum, but I feel like on engaged supports, really the most important character is you. You need to be in there and be able to absorb as much damage as possible. And I feel like this rune page really solves a lot of it. Now, there is one drawback, though. You aren't taking the biscuits, so you don't have that extra mana. So longer fights uh, at some stages of the game while you're building towards your mythic item can feel a little clunky because you do have mana constraints. So watch out for that. Um, but I still recommend that you take Triumph because usually you go in, you're, t you're absorbing a ton of damage, you're usually starting to back out. And especially if you have good engages that are getting you resets, you're going to be getting a lot of that HP back. And remember, you're building actually tanky, so that means 12% health actually is meaningful than, uh, rather than comparing it to when like you go Glacial and you anchor in and you die before you, all your spells come back up and then you're sad. Um, so this is like my go-to tank build. I've been loving it recently. I feel like I have a new breath of life on playing tanks. Uh, plus, I would just say in general, um, the games are a lot more bloody and there's a lot more fighting. So there's just more gold. So you can actually afford a lot of these items like getting... Uh, you know, uh, skipping over the lock and instead going the Iceborne Gauntlet and then going the Frozen Heart with Ninja Tabby. You'll be really, really durable in a lot of games. And you can go things like, uh, you know, Spirit Visage as a third item if you feel like you need Magic Resist. I've been loving this a lot, and I think that in general, once you start taking it, you'll be like, wow, I feel like I'm playing a tank now. And so I'm a big fan of these two rune setups because it just, you know, I feel like for a lot of people, runes are really a problematic thing where they're taking runes that aren't making them as durable or they're make, you know, taking runes that aren't really giving them nearly as much power. So these are great runes for especially out of laning phase scenarios. And I feel like for a lot of people, the laning phases are kind of stale. Not too much is happening. Maybe you're moving around a little bit and maybe there's some action in the river, but uh, I feel like these runes are really great for less active laning phases or just more precise laning phases where you aren't just getting poked and prodded down the entire time. Big fan of these. Um, so yeah, hopefully these uh, two rune pages get added to your arsenal for your tank players or your Lulu Soraka players. And that will help you really level up your gameplay, make you a lot more tanky and durable. And uh, especially leading into the durability uh, update that's going to be coming out in 1210. I think you guys will love these rune pages and be like, wow, I was really missing out on actually playing a character that doesn't die uh, to a light breeze. So hopefully you guys find this helpful. Uh, don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment in the section below and hit that bell and whistle. I'll see you next time. Peace.